Hello, I'm so happy you're here. Tonight we are gonna make a really easy, I would call it a weekday night dish that is, is, can be vegetarian, it can be vegan, or it can be meatful, it can be gluten-free and dairy-free, it can be just gluten-free if you wanna add some cheese. So it's a lot of options to this dish. And it's a little bit different. It's spaghetti, but it's Spanish spaghetti, uh, mainly because of paprika in it. And we're gonna start it on the stove and we're gonna finish it in the oven. And that's what makes it so easy. You're not gonna have a ton of pots. It's like a one-pot meal. Well, literally, it is a one-pot meal. So we're gonna jump right in on the stove here soon, but I wanna um, show you a trick with the pasta. Okay, so we're using spaghetti, and I chose to use ronzoni, one of my favorites, along uh, barilla is really good too. One of those two would do well, or if you have a favorite gluten-free spaghetti, go ahead and use that. We're gonna want the spaghetti to be in two inch pieces. And so I could, I could break them, I could try to get a knife on them, not gonna work. <laughs> spaghetti everywhere, but I'm going to show you a trick. So I have a towel here and I am going to roll up the spaghetti in a towel. And then I've got one end. I'm going to do both ends. I'm going to put it on the side of my board here and I'm going to break at about two inches. Did you hear that? And I'm going to break again and I'm going to break again and keep going until I am done. Okay, that's about two. You don't have to be perfect here. And then I'm going to unroll. It's like magic. They are magically broken. Oh, look at that. How cool is that? Okay, now I'm going to take, let's see if I can do this. No, I'm just going to do it this way. I can see me spilling this all over the place. So I'm going to put it in a bowl because we're going to get this into the, into the skillet here shortly. Oops, nope, can't escape. Okay, I'm gonna finish doing this and then I'll meet you over there at the stove. I have heated up some olive oil in a large skillet. Now the skillet I chose was very important because it needs to be oven proof because this is going in the oven and you need to make sure you have an oven proof lid of which this one is. So there can be no, no rubber, Teflon, things like that on your skillet. I've got the oil heated up and so I'm gonna get my onions in, start cooking those. I'm gonna cook them till they are a bit transparent. Okay, the onions have cooked for, I don't know, a couple minutes, so now it's time for the red and green peppers to enter the pan. And also the minced garlic. Okay, I'm gonna mix it in here. I'm gonna cook them down for about five, seven minutes or so until they start softening, till the peppers start softening. At this stage, because I'm a big proponent of seasoning as I go, I'm just going to add just a little bit of salt and pepper. Okay, that should be good. It's been about five to seven minutes. The smell of the peppers is just phenomenal. Um, they're softened, and so now it's time to move on. So I want to give you a little cooking tip here. It works for me, may, may work for you. So whenever I'm at the stove cooking and I have lots of ingredients, I line them up in order of appearances so I know, so I get them in the pan in the right order and it keeps me organized. And that way I don't kind of screw up a recipe, which is never a good thing to do. Okay, so here is the ingredient going in the pan that actually makes it the Spanish spaghetti. It is sweet Hungarian paprika. And we're gonna put that in there and we're gonna mix it in with all the peppers, onions, and garlic. And it's gonna really coat them and give them lots of flavor. Oh gosh, that smells so good. Okay, we wanna let them cook for about 30 seconds or so. Really get those flavors in there. And you'll notice that it's turning a little orange. We have our red peppers now look a little orange and our green peppers, well, they still look green. Okay, next step, and this is what can make it vegetarian or not vegetarian. I'm using chicken uh, stock, but you can surely use vegetable stock here. And so I'm kind of gonna deglaze the pan with the vegetable stock, or chicken stock, sorry. I'm gonna mix this in a little bit, get any, there shouldn't be too many chunks fond at the bottom of the pan, but if there is, I'm getting it off, because that's flavor. And now the two, the Tomato sauce is going in. And theoretically, 
this is a this is a vegan dish. Um, I'm going to make it not a vegan dish here um, while this is in the oven. I'm actually going to cook up some chorizo, um, which is another Spanish ingredient, and, and kind of use it as a garnish on top. I didn't want to cook the chorizo in there because I didn't want it to over, overpower all the other flavors. So if you leave off the chorizo and use vegetable stock, then you have a vegetarian and or vegan dish. Okay. Uh, and then I've got the black olives going in. Okay, I'm just now coming up to a boil and I wanna make sure that I get some salt. Now we just put quite a bit of unseasoned tomato sauce in here, so I am gonna salt fairly well. It's probably, I mean, typically I just do pinches. I'd say that's probably a teaspoon, half a teaspoon, but salt to your taste. And then I'm gonna put some pepper in here as well. Okay. Now it's coming up to a boil, which I'm very happy about. So when you put the spaghetti in, you're not gonna mix. We're not gonna mix at all, we're done mixing. What you, do, you want it to do is to sit on top at first, like this. I'm not mixing, I'm moving. And then I want to kind of push it down to get the, the liquid, and I'm gonna turn off the heat now, to cover the pasta, because the pasta is gonna cook in the oven and it needs to be submerged, not all the way in the liquid, but it needs, a lot of it needs to be in the liquid. Now remember, we're covering this in the oven, so it's gonna create a lot of, um, a great cooking environment for pasta. Okay, and as you do this, some of your pasta may try to leave the pan. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I got a nice even layer. Okay, I'm gonna grab my lid. Okay. And I'm gonna warn you twice here because I've done this and I had a nice little burn on my hand. Um, when it comes out of the oven, this handle is going to be hot and you're not used to a pan handle being hot. And at some point you're gonna to wanna to grab it. So I have this wonderful, I think, yeah, made by Lodge. It's a silicone pot handle that when it comes out, I'm gonna put it on there and it's gonna remind me not to touch that with my hand and I could touch it with this. And I'm gonna tell you that when it comes out of the oven because I don't want anybody to burn themselves. Okay, 400 degree oven. 20 minutes. And when it's done, pasta will be completely cooked. So while the spaghetti is in the oven cooking, I have put some chorizo in a pan, added a little olive oil, and now I am cooking it up. And I'm gonna, like I said earlier, I'm gonna make, uh, use the chorizo as a bit of a garnish. So this is a completely optional ingredient for this recipe. I think it's gonna make a wonderful addition. Um, and so as, I, as it cooks here, I'm chopping it up kind of the same way you cook ground, you know, ground beef or ground pork. Just kind of breaking it apart the more it cooks. And then once, uh, once it's done, I'll take it off the stove, let it cool, and then we'll, we'll put it on top of this garnish. Let's get this uh, spaghetti out of the oven. And, okay, it is going to be hot. <sighs> okay, we're out of the oven. The very first thing I'm gonna do, like I explained, is I'm putting this here. One, it's gonna protect me because I always grab the handle, and two, it's gonna remind me that this is hot because I wouldn't have it on here if it wasn't hot. Okay, this I'm gonna put to the side. Let me get a fork and see if we are, oh, I don't even need to taste that. I can feel it. We are indeed tender, but I'm going to taste it anyways. I'm going to get a piece here. Oh, yeah. Okay, that is wonderful. So now what we're going to do is going to add a little bit of parsley. I'm going to reserve about a quarter I don't know, about maybe a tablespoon or so for garnish. Just gonna put that in there. And then even though that's there, I'm grabbing this so I don't hurt myself again. And I'll mix it through. Now I do not have the stove on, I just have this on top of the stove. Mixing through the parsley. Oh, this smells so amazing and looks so amazing. Okay, now I had my fork, now I get another fork because I want to taste it for flavor now. See if I need any salt and pepper. It's really hot. Uh oh. I think we could just use 
just a smidgen of salt, not, e not much at all, just a smidgen. Okay, back with this so I don't hurt myself. Okay, the final step before we plate and garnish some more is to take a half a lime, lemon, <laughs> lime, lime would be interesting, half a lemon, and um, all over the top of it. Okay, I'm just gonna mix it a little bit more now that I've done that. I'm gonna get this plated up and we're gonna get back over here to the island and we're gonna do some tasting. So for garnish, pretty simple. I am gonna take some chorizo I cooked up, put it on the top, not a lot of it because it's a little spicy and I don't do a lot of spicy. And then a little bit of some uh, parsley. And that is going to be the extent of my garnish. Now, if you can do cheese, I would recommend Manchego um, or Pecorino Romano. Those are both sheep cheeses. So if you don't do dairy, but can do goat or sheep, those would be perfect additions. I can do goat and sheep, but I'm choosing not to put any cheese on this version. Um, I'm also gonna try some, I'm gonna take a bite and I think I'm gonna try some sour cream because that sounds like it would be good. Okay, here we go. I'm going in. I've got a nice fork full of everything. Oh, mmm. The paprika, I, I really, it's a secret ingredient, whatever you want to call it. It brings such depth to this. And, uh, and the, the onions and the peppers and the black olives. I really think I'm putting more black olives in next time because I love black olives. And if you love them, put more in. So my new, not my new, my favorite sour, dairy-free sour cream at, at the moment is Simple Truth, is a um, Kroger brand. Uh, it's really, really good. I've tried out quite a few and I'm really loving it. So I added some Simple Truth uh, sour cream, which is gonna be a nice uh, foil to the spiciness I am now experiencing from the chorizo. But the flavor of the chorizo with this is so good, I wanna put up with the spiciness. Okay, let's see what this brings to the, to the party here. Mmm. Oh my goodness, yes. Put the sour cream on there. Oh, it just has a nice cream in it, a little bit more different depth of flavor. Oh my God, that's great. Okay, so for dairy-free, gluten-free, I say put the sour cream on there. If you can do dairy, the cheese is gonna give you that same creaminess and uh, added depth of flavor, so do that. Again, use uh, vegetable stock and stay away from the chorizo if you would like this to be uh, vegetarian and vegan. I cannot wait to eat the rest of this bowl. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. The full recipe can be found um, in the description below. It'll be a link or go to gfexplorers.com. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Uh, you'll be notified every time we have a new video, which is every Wednesday and Sunday. Again, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy eating.